you got to love them despite all the ignorance, despite all the hatred, despite all the dumbness and stupidity. You still got to love them, chosen ones. This is one of the major distinctions between a child of light who is truly chosen and those who are the fakers. We love them despite all of their flaws, despite all of the ridiculousness, despite all the blindness, all the deafness, all the muteness. We love them anyway. And this is one of the major reasons why I believe God has chosen you. You love them despite all this. And it's also a big distinction between a child of God and a child of the lie. Those of the lie will hold animosity and hatred in their hearts for their opposition. Who is you? They cannot tolerate anything outside of themselves. They cannot tolerate those who hold different beliefs than they do. They think they are in the right. They will continue to perpetuate witchcraft, control. They will try to dominate you. They will manipulate what you say. And they will continue to persecute you. However, the chosen ones and the children of light, we wish freedom on people. Despite their imperfections, despite their disagreements, despite them having even evil intents, we still desire to live in a world of freedom. Because that is the way we can express ourselves authentically before God. The people of the world and the people under Satan, they want to mimic hell on earth. They want you living smallly. They want you living in chains. They want you to have to limit your speech. They will call up down and down up. They will call the truth false and falsity the truth. They will allow criminals into the country unchecked and they have no bounds when it comes to criminality but as soon as you start speaking the truth, they will try to persecute you. So we're truly dealing with a battle between good and evil. But even so, it's our job as the chosen to still love. Now, love does not mean tolerating evil. But what it does mean is continuing to open our hearts. This way, we're not cringed in and diminishing ourselves we expand the love and its goodness that overcomes evil it's not hatred that overcomes evil it's goodness and truth that overcomes evil jesus christ is the truth he is the way he is the life and it's more life it's more goodness. It's more truth. It's expansion of God's kingdom. That's what overcomes. They will try to pigeonhole you and make it like you were the one spreading hate. But in reality, it's the hatred in their own hearts. It's their refusal to open to the truth. This is why they are so upset all the time. This is why they are so angry all the time. This is why they, they are the ones who have hatred in their hearts. Because they refuse to open. They refuse to accept. They refuse to acknowledge the truth. And even with this, though, we are bigger than that. The kingdom of God is at least twice as big as the kingdom of Satan. And 
when we know this in our hearts that we are the superior kingdom because we are under God, then there's no need to hate. There's no need to cringe in and halt of our expansion. The expansion comes from love. And it comes from acknowledging God's truth. It expands from putting the word in us. To him who has, more will be given. And to him who does not have, more will be taken. So we want to have the Lord's word working through us. We want to be doing his will because he is the God of growth. He is the God of abundance. He is the God of prosperity. There are some Christians who try to put a halt to that growth and think that they are being very austere and, and righteous in this. But in reality, the Lord wants you to live in greatness. He wants to to expand his kingdom through you. He doesn't want you living in poverty. He doesn't want you living as a small thing in some corner of the world somewhere. He wants you to live righteously. It's Jesus Christ who is the Godhead over all earthly and angelic powers. He does not want his children to live a small life. So we must realize that, that we're dealing with an opposing force who does want you to live smallly, who does want you to live in sickness, who does want you to doubt yourself, who does want to crimp your expansion. And... It's when we tap into the Word of God, we realize that He is a God of life. And the way of life is growth. It's positive expansion. And we are to play a part of that. But sometimes it's easy to forget. Because the devil will try to make you doubt yourself and to make you feel guilty for wanting to expand. Love is an expansive force. Gratitude is an expansive force. When Jesus gave thanks for the small bread and the small fish that he had, it was multiplied. So this gratitude allows for that life force to come in and expand you more and more. However, society wants to limit your growth sometimes and put you in chains and make you feel like there's not enough to go around. However, that was not Jesus' message. If he had taken that bread and that fish and said, oh, we must just scrape by with this little then it wouldn't have happened. But instead, he was grateful for what he had. He was grateful for what the Lord had given him. And it was through that gratitude, through that acknowledgement of what he had, using that to the utmost fullness, that the Lord blessed it. So this expansive quality of love is that of God. It's that of faith. It's that of goodness. It's easy to focus on what is and crimp in again and diminish what we have and not to be grateful. But it's through this gratitude that the expansion happens and continually putting that gratitude in our life. It releases the resistance to the expansion. In gratitude, there's no resistance. In love, there's no resistance.
And faith that keeps you going. It removes doubt. It keeps you active. Tapping into these, invite that presence from the Lord. Expansion comes through tapping into the true power of the Lord, who is the God of life. He is our God. He is the true one. If we put idols in the way, if we start focusing too much on the world, if we put things before the Lord, we can't tap into the truth, and then our growth will be limited. But it's important to come back to the true power, who truly has power over all of it. He is in command, not the world.